Hi and welcome. I'm Julianne Cost, and in this video we're going to learn everything we need to know in order to create a custom book in Lightroom Classic. First, I want to point out that I've created a collection in the library module with all of the images that I want to use in the book. I've also put the images in the order that I think that I want them to appear. You can always refine the order and add and delete images from the book project later, but I feel that getting all of the images in order is going to help me to be more productive when we go to the book module. I've also added all of the titles that I want to use in the book module here in the library module in the metadata panel. And that's because if I add the metadata here for the title or the caption, that metadata will be accessible to me in the book module. If I simply move to the book module and then start typing in information, that information is going to be specific to only the book module. All right, let's go ahead and go to the book module and I'm going to tap the I key, which is going to hide the overlay that's showing. On the left, we can see that I'm still working in that same collection, but I'm going to go ahead and hide this panel for now so that we have more room to work. On the right hand side, I have right clicked or control clicked on Mac and set the panels to solo mode so that I'll only see one panel at a time. And when I click on another panel, the previously opened panel will automatically close. Now we'll start with the book settings panel. The book module supports the blurb photo book as well as blurb magazine, trade book, and the PDF and JPEG file formats. So the photo books are an excellent way to present your work. Magazines provide a high-end look with a soft cover and a magazine paper. The blurb trade book come in smaller sizes with a variety of covers and they use a more standard paper that makes them more affordable and ideal for distribution. The PDF file format has a variety of different sizes to choose from, a number of different cover options, and they're easily distributed electronically and can be printed. And then the JPEG file format is great if you need to export the pages and then maybe use a color lab to print your images. Now, I'm not going to take the time to go through every option, but take a look at what you're interested in when you have time. Today, we're going to create a blurb photo book. I'm going to choose the standard landscape size. I want to choose the hardcover image wrap, but I could also have a dust jacket or a soft cover. And then for paper type, I'm going to choose the ProLine Uncoated. It's a rather flat surface. If you want something a little more glossy, you can go with the ProLine Pearl. I'm also going to enable the logo page. That's going to give me a slight price discount just for showing this last page in the book with the blurb logo. Now the book module also has its own preferences. Here I can choose my default photo zoom. I can either zoom to fill the cell or to fit the image within the cell. I can start new books by auto filling, which I'll leave off for now. And I can choose to fill text boxes with either filler text or the title metadata, caption metadata, or the file name itself. For now, I'll leave it set to tile metadata. And then let's take a look at the auto layout options. Here at the top is a preset area. I can choose from one of these presets or I can create my own. Presets work really well if your book is very structured. For example, you might want all of the pages on the left side to be blank or maybe the same as the right size or be a fixed layout or even maybe randomize it. For now, I'll choose blank and then on the right hand side, I'll choose a fixed layout and I want one image per page. There are a number of different templates that I can choose from, but for right now, I'll keep it very simple. Again, I can choose between fitting or filling for my zoom options, and I could even add photo text, align it with a photo, and use a text style preset, which we'll cover more in depth later. Since I've made changes here, I can either update the preset or save my own preset. And once I create it, we can then choose auto layout and Lightroom Classic will automatically lay out my entire book. 
Of course, we can always make changes to any of these layouts, but if you had a very structured book, I wanted to show you how easy it is to have Lightroom Classic do it for you. In a minute, we're actually going to clear this layout because I do want to show you how to lay out a book with more control. But for now, let's take a look at how we can navigate the different pages of the book. I'll go ahead and select page three here to start, and we can use the icons in the lower left in order to change or navigate the different pages. Here we're viewing the multi-page view, but I can simply click to go to a double page spread or click to view a single page. If I double click within that page, it would zoom and I can double click again in order to zoom out. Now to move from page to page, we can use the navigation tool in the toolbar or we can use the right and left arrows. If I'm viewing a double page spread and I use the right and left arrows, it will move from spread to spread. If I want to use keyboard shortcuts instead of these three icons, I can use Command T to see a single page, Command R to view a double page spread, and Command E to see multiple spreads at once. I can also use the thumbnail slider in order to zoom in or zoom out when I'm viewing multiple pages. All right, let's go ahead and clear this layout for now and start creating our own custom book. I'm going to start with the front and back cover. I will double click in order to zoom in. Now the front and back cover have a number of unique properties. We can double click to see it larger and then double click again to zoom back out, but you can't view only the front or the back of the cover. You're always looking at both the back as well as the front at the same time. Now in order to change the template, we can use the page panel and then click on the disclosure triangle and it will show us all of the different cover options that we have. So we can see they vary in the number of images, how large the images are, and also whether or not there is text added to the book cover. I'll go ahead and select this one here. And as I position my cursor over different areas, we can see the text cells as well as the photo cells. I also have a number of different guides showing, so we can see the page bleed on the outer area of the image, the text safe area or the area that we want to make sure that our text falls within, as well as darken down photo cells. Now to add a photo, I'll simply drag and drop it from the film strip into the photo cell here. We can see that it is a different aspect ratio, so I can click on the image and then use the zoom slider to zoom in or out, or I can right click or control click on Mac and choose to zoom the photo to fit the cell. Then I can click and drag in order to reposition the photograph within the cell. If I click on this center point, that will actually reposition the photo cell. I'll use Command or Control Z to undo that. And if I click on one of the anchor points along the edge, I can change the size of the cell. Again, I'll undo that. Now I want to add some text to the cover, so I will reveal the type panel. And then I'm going to triple click in order to select all of the text within this area here and substitute it with the title of the book, in this case, Landforms. Then I'll swipe to select that text, change the font to Myriad, change the color to white, and increase the size. I can either use the slider here, or we can use the scrubby slider, or I can simply enter in a value. In order to add a little bit more space between each one of the letter forms, I'm going to increase the tracking. If all of these options aren't visible, you can use the disclosure triangle in order to see them. And then I'll click to justify this on the right side. We can resize the text cell as well as use that center icon in order to reposition it, making sure that we stay within that title safe area. Next, I'll add an image to the back by just dragging and dropping from the film strip. And then I'll delete the text that it automatically added. 
So that I don't have to keep doing this, I'm going to return to Auto Layout, edit the preset, uncheck the Add Photo Text, and then update the preset. If I want to change the color of the background, I can use the Background panel, enable the background color, and then select a color. If I want to add text in the spine area, I can click within that area and then start typing. I'll swipe to select the text, return to the type panel, making sure that I select something other than black, and I'll decrease the size to 12 points. Then I'll deselect the text, tap the tab key a few times, and type in photography by Julianne cost. I might need to enter in one more tab there just to move it down a bit farther. And then to center the text on the spine, I will triple click to select all of the type and use the options in the type panel to center it. All right, now that we've made some customizations to the book, I'm going to choose to create a saved book. But first, let's take a look at our collections panel. Here we can see the collection of images. When I choose Create Saved Book, I can now give this a name, save it within the Landforms book demo, and create the saved book. We can see I still have the collection of images, but this collection has the book icon which is telling me that it's saving not only the images, but also the book layout. All right, let's go ahead and close that panel. And now I want to start adding additional pages as well as images and customizing the layout of our book. So the first page here will always be blank, and then we have the second page where we could start adding our photographs. However, I actually want to just have text on this page, so we'll come back to that in just a moment. Now to add new pages, we can use the page panel. There's two options. If I add a page, it's going to add a page with the same layout as the page that's targeted, or I can simply add a blank page. I'll go ahead and choose that. In this case, it added two pages because it does have to complete a double page spread. Then I need to select a layout for the page. I can do that using the drop down arrow here on the page itself and selecting from all of these different templates. You'll notice they're categorized by one photo per page or two photos. Some of them have text, some of them have just multiple photographs, and when you hover your cursor over any of these templates, you'll see the white dot. If you click on that, it would add it to your favorites so that you don't have to scroll through so many templates. So I'll start with just one photo. I want one with a border, so I'll add that to my favorites, and then I'll click on it in order to assign that template to the page. Now I can drag and drop an image from the film strip into that page. I'll go ahead and do the same for the second image. In this case, it's taken me to the favorites, so it's much easier to select. All right, I'll drag and drop that. And then, because I want to use that same template, I'll choose Add Page in the Page panel and drag and drop the next image. Now on the next page, I want to add two photographs stacked on top of one another. So I'm going to select two photos and then scroll down until I see the template that I want to use. I'll add it to my favorites and then apply it. Then we can drag and drop an image into each one of those photo cells. I'll go ahead and make the thumbnails just a little bit larger so it's easier to see. If I want to swap these images, I can drag and drop within the page itself. If I wanted to replace an image, I could drag and drop from the film strip. As soon as I add a photo to the book, that photo gets a count in the film strip. If I use that photo more than once, then we can watch as that count increases. All right, I'm going to go ahead and put back those other two images that I had before. Now I want to add another page with this layout, so I'll choose Add Page. And this time, instead of selecting each image individually, I'll hold down the Command key on Mac, Control key on Windows, select two images, and then drag and drop them onto the page. 
This next page, I want a single image, so I'll select that template and then drag and drop. If I want to rearrange the pages, we can click in the yellow area below a page and then drag until we see the yellow vertical line. If I want to reorder multiple pages, I just need to select them by holding down the command or the control key and then dragging again until we see that vertical yellow line. Of course, we can quickly add multiple pages. So if I knew, for example, the next two images, I wanted to both have a single image on them, I can add the pages and then assign the template and quickly drag and drop from the film strip. Now this next page, I want to have two vertical images on it. So I'll choose to add a blank page and then I can use the template picker to select two photos, scroll down, mark it as my favorite, and then apply it. I'll select the two photographs in the film strip and drag and drop them in. The next image, I only want to have a single photograph, so I'll assign the template and drag and drop. All right, let's add two more blank pages. And I want this double page spread to have the same layout as the previous one. So I'll select both of them and then right click or control click on Mac, choose copy layout, then select the next spread, right click and choose paste layout. Then we'll just fill that layout with a single image and with two vertical images. Next, I have a panorama and I want to add that as a double page spread. So with the page on the left targeted, I'll choose two page spreads and then select the double page spread and drag and drop my image into it. I'll double click in order to zoom in and then select the photograph and I can either use the zoom slider in order to increase or decrease the size of the photograph within the cell or I can just right click and choose zoom photo to fill cell. And then I can drag in order to reposition it within the cell. All right, next I wanna add some page numbers. So on the page panel, I'll enable that and then select their location as well as choose whether I want them on both the left and right or just the left or right. When I double click on a page to zoom in, we can see the page numbers are quite large. So I'll select it go to the type panel, decrease the size to eight points, and change the font to Myriad Pro. By default, that's going to change the page numbers on all of the pages throughout the book. We can also choose what page we want the page numbering to start on. So if I didn't want this first page to be page one, I could right click on the second page and choose to start the page numbering there. I can also choose to hide a page number on any page. In this case, because this is primarily going to be a title page, I'm going to hide the page number there, scroll down, and also hide the page number on the double page spread that has the image bleeding to both sides of the page. On page 16, I wanna add three images. So I'll use the layout picker, select three photos, then scroll down, Mark this one as my favorite and apply it. From my film strip, I'll select the three images and drag and drop them onto the page. Then I'll drag this middle one to the right just to swap those two images. Now, as you get further and further along in the book layout, instead of having to scroll the film strip all the time, there's a special filter in the book module. When I choose no filter and then scroll down, we can see that there's a filter called unused. So now I'm only viewing the images that I have not added to my book. Just remember that if we have this filter on and we go to the library module, we're not going to be seeing all of our images and we'll want to turn our filters off to see the rest of them. Now, if I've forgotten an image and I want to add it to the book, well, I know it's in the same folder as this image, so I'll right click and choose go to folder in library. Then I'll find the image that I want to add, scroll down in my collection, and just drag and drop the image into the book. Then we can use this arrow icon. It's a shortcut that will take us directly back to the book module. Now I can see that image that I just added. 
and I want to add it to page 17, so I'll choose my layout and drag and drop it on top of it. Next, we're going to see how easy it is to create, modify, and save custom page layouts. So under the page panel, let's go ahead and add two blank pages, and then I will use the keyboard shortcut Command R in order to see the double page spread, and we'll start on page 18. This time, instead of starting with a template, I'm simply going to drag and drop an image onto the page, and Lightroom Classic will automatically create a cell. I can then reposition that cell by clicking on that middle anchor point, or I can expand or contract the cell by clicking on any of those edge anchor points. If I drag near the edge of the cell, then I'm actually going to be changing the padding of the cell. Now, as I drag, you can see that they're locked by default, but if we go to the cell panel, I can unlink them so that I could then reposition the photograph within the cell from the top or from any side independently. For now, I will remove all of the cell padding and go ahead and link that again. We can also add a photo border color and change the width of the border as well as the color, but in this case, I'm going to leave that disabled. Besides dragging and dropping, we can also right click in order to add a photo cell and then drag and drop an image within that cell. If I have two photos or two cells that overlap one another, I can right click and change the stacking order by either sending the one in front backwards, or if there were multiple image, I could send it all the way to the back. Likewise, I can right click and bring it forward or bring it all the way to the front. If I ever want to delete a photo cell, I can right click and choose to remove the selected cell. Now, even though there's already an image on this page, I can always change the layout. So in this case, I'll choose the one photo per page. If I drag out these two images and then resize them and choose to zoom the photos to fit the cells, I can then use the guides panel in order to help with the alignment of the two images. By default, they're not going to snap to any kind of grid, and I can reposition them anywhere on the page. However, I can change the grid snap to cells, in which case we can see as I get close to another cell, Lightroom will automatically snap it to that cell, or I can snap it to a grid and then enable the page grid as well as the grid lines. Now, as I reposition this, instead of snapping to the other image, Lightroom is going to snap the cell to the grid. All right, let's remove both of these selected cells, and then I'm going to choose a template to display four different images. I'll mark it as my favorite and then apply it, and I'll drag and drop these four images on the page. I'll hold down the Command key on Mac, Control key on Windows, and select all four of the images, right click, and choose to zoom the photos to fit the cells. I think, however, they're being cropped a bit much, so I'm going to select just this top cell, and with that grid snap set to grid, I'm going to increase the size of it a bit, and we can, in fact, toggle off the zoom photo to fit cell for a moment, and then just change the size of this so that it doesn't have to be cropped quite as much. All right, then I'll set it to zoom again, and then customize the other cells as well. Here, I'll select this one and bring it over, and bring it up. And if I need to check to see if they're the same size, we can always reposition them in the image area. So I'll bring that up, and then adjust the last cell. All right, let's toggle off the page grid as well as the guidelines. And if I think I'm going to want to use this customized layout, I can right click and choose to save this as a custom page. 
Then the next time I click on the arrow in order to select a template, we can see our custom page under the custom pages area, and I can even add that to my favorites. Excellent, now it's time to explore some additional options for working with text. I'm going to quickly navigate to that first page and then double click on it to view it. And I wanna select a different layout template. In this case, I want it to be a text page, so I'll select the first option. Then I can click anywhere within that text cell and start typing, in this case, the title of the book I'll then select that text and using the type panel, I'm going to change the font as well as the family, making it bold. I'll increase the size as well as increase the tracking and center it. Then I'll tap return and I'm going to change the size down to something around 16 points and type in photography by Julianne Cost. This I don't want bold, so I'll select it and then change that back to regular. And to change the size and other attributes, instead of using the panel, I'll select the targeted adjustment tool. Here, if I click and drag down or up, we can change the leading. If I click and drag left to right, we can change the size. And if I hold down the Command and Shift key and I drag left or right, I can change the tracking. Then I'll resize this cell and then reposition it. And we can see that it is snapping, so I'll return to Guides and just turn that off and then reposition it by dragging. In order to add some additional text, I'll right-click and choose Add Cell and then Photo Description and type in 2023. Again, I will resize that and then reposition it down at the bottom of the page. In order to make sure that it's centered, I'll just increase the size of the cell to the same width as the text safe guides. I'll also swipe to select that and then just decrease the size a bit. Next, I wanna add some text to my photos, so I will move to a double page spread that has some images on it. I'll select the photograph and then move to the text panel and enable photo text. In the text panel, we can then choose what metadata Lightroom is going to use in the book module. In this case, I have it set to title, but it could also be set to caption or any of these additional options. We can also add custom photo text by just selecting this text and then typing in whatever we want, but it won't write that information into the metadata panel. It's only going to be available in this book. We can change the offset as well as the alignment with the photo, and we can change the different type attributes. I'll wanna make sure that the type is selected and I'm going to increase the size to nine points and make it right aligned. Now, if I wanted to use these settings over and over again, I'd wanna be sure to save my current settings as a new preset. In this case, I'll call it JK and then caption. Now, instead of having to change each image one by one, I'll use Command or Control E in order to see all of my different pages and then select edit and I will select all of the photo cells within the book. Now there are a few photos that I don't want to have photo text with so I'll hold down the command key and subtract them from the selection. I'll scroll down and also subtract the image that's on the double page spread. Use the text panel to enable the photo text. Set it to title and increase the offset to eight. Then under the type panel, I'll apply the JK caption so that all of the text has the same attribute. Now, when I move through the double page spreads, if there are any spreads where I want to hide the photo text, I can simply select that cell and toggle off the option. All right, I'm gonna hold down the Command key and the Shift key and use the right arrow in order to quickly move to the end of the book. 
Then I'll back up one spread and using the page panel, I'm going to add a blank page. We can also add page text under the text panel by enabling it and we can offset the page text as well as anchor it from either the top or the bottom. Now it looks like we can only enter in a small amount of text, but as we start typing, we can see that that will actually automatically grow. If I wanted to move the text left or right, then I'd need to use the cell panel in order to reposition it. So while you can add text this way, I don't actually think it's the best way. So under the text area, I'm going to disable that and instead, like we did before, I'm going to right click and choose Add Cell and then Photo Description. I'll go ahead and reposition this because I want to show you one more thing about text. I have some text on the clipboard, so I will just click once here in order to add the text insertion point and use Command V or Control V on Windows to paste in my text. Then. I'll select all by using Command A on Mac, Control A on Windows, and in the type area, I'm going to select a preset that I'd already created. Then because there is more text that I'm not seeing that is beyond this text cell, I'm going to switch from a single column to a double column where I can then adjust the gutter between the two columns. I also don't want all of this to be bold, so I'll do a quick Command A to select it all again and then change this to regular. We can also use the background panel in order to add a graphic to the text page. I don't want to apply this background globally, so I will uncheck that and then we could drag and drop an image from the film strip into the panel. We can then change the opacity of that graphic, or if we preferred, we could use the drop down menu and then choose a graphic from either the travel or wedding folders and apply that instead. All right, we don't really need these two pages, so I'm going to select them both and then right click and choose to remove the pages. Then I'll use Command E in order to view multiple pages and all of these changes that we've been making have been saved along the way. So when we're finished with our book, we can choose to send the book to Blurb. That will then hand us off to the Blurb interface where we can enter in our information and upload and purchase our book. I'm Julianne Cost. Thanks for watching.